<laughs> what is that old screen, Jeff? <laughs> Take off. That's an old school shotgun stuff. Yeah, man. I was wondering what was happening there. <laughs> That's one of our, <laughs> one of our first cameras back in Arkham. I see that, yeah. I like that camera work. We're in torpedoes, man. <laughs> it's old, old, old. <laughs> I made it to Arkham Side. All right, guys, we're live. Hey, everybody, welcome to KBN Live. Uh, I'm Jeff Malat. We got Ryan Lambert up there. We are your host. Uh, if you're just getting on, help us out and share this around so people that want to hear about this new tournament format can get the information. Uh, and throw us a comment real quick when you get on the stream so we know you're here and uh, we can answer your questions later on in the, in the broadcast. Uh, we're bringing in Greg Nosar tonight. Greg, thank you for coming on here, man. Uh, Jeff Ryan, appreciate it, man. Yeah, there's a there's a, a little buzz going about your new tournament format, the Kayak Bass Bracket. I guess it's now it's the Kayak Bass Bracket Tour. Thing filled yes, up sir. quick. Uh, it did. You know, March Madness didn't happen. The live tournaments didn't happen. So people were looking for something to latch on to. And, and here we go. Kayak Bass Bracket is uh, is full, and there's some cool matchups on there. So, it, you know, it's going to be fun to talk about and fun to follow over the, the next several weekends. But, man, thanks again for, for jumping on here with us. Hey, thanks for inviting me, man. This is awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, just tell us a little bit about your background and how you came up with this idea and, and you know, what, what made you jump in and, and make this happen? Well, I mean, look, you know, we're all guys and, and ladies, you know, if, if we're fishing, we're very competitive and we're in, we're in a point of time, very unusual situation. And, you know, we've got tournaments canceling left and right, which is the right decision. We don't want a bunch of people hanging around the, the boat ramp, spreading a potential disease or virus around the nation. So, you know, I think, you know, the decision to cancel the tournaments is, is 100% the right thing to do. But, man, look, I'm a competitive guy. I love sports. You know, we don't have the NCAA in March Madness. We don't have, uh, you know, baseball starting. We don't have, you know, the hockey. We don't have NBA. We don't have anything that is going to help us facilitate that competitive nature inside us in watching live sports. But one thing I want to do is I want to fish. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You know, Virginia shut down. Uh, I live in the state of Virginia. Virginia shut down everything, but we can still golf. We can still fish. And I love competitive kayak fishing. And um, <clears throat> so I thought, you know, hey, what's the best way to get a competitive uh, kayak tournament together where we're keeping, number one, everybody safe and uh, away from, you know, groups, you know. And that's why people are shutting down because you're, you're not grouping guys. And you can open it up nationwide, put 64 guys in it, March Madness style, and um, put them head to head. And let's go, man. Let's have some fun. You know, let's. Go one on one and and see if we can get a bass champion by a bracket. So it just kind of made sense, and I was kind of crowdsourcing on on Talk Bass Nation. It had tremendous response to it, and then I was just like, hey, let's just put a bracket together. Sixty four guys signed up within two and a half days, and uh, you know we did a random drawing and random seating. And uh, man, I tell you, the the response has been phenomenal. It's been overwhelming to be honest with you. Um, but here we are, you know, we're going to, we're going to take it and run with it and just, uh, just have fun. So how does this work? So this is just kind of open free for all like public water. <clears throat> like what, how, what's the setup here? Yeah. So what we did, we try to do this strategically. It's not just a open free for all. We kind of did this, uh, we, where we have 64 guys and you know, it is nationwide. We have people signed up from Maine to California. The hardest part about putting it all, all together was to have, uh, guys in different regions being able to fish similar conditions in the regions, right? So we do have an east, north, south, and west brackets. And so, you know, we have guys from Texas that are competing. We had a bunch of people from Texas. I noticed, and, yeah, Texas managed to be in like four quadrants of that bracket. Yeah, and, and they overrun. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't put 16 guys. It just didn't make sense to put 16 guys from Texas into one, one region. You know, you want to kind of mix it up a little bit. So we spread them out between the west and south brackets. 
Uh, we have a one or two in the uh, north bracket, and that's just because you know we just didn't have room for anybody else in that area. But North um, needs all the help they can get anyway. Yeah. Might as well, well throw a few Texans in there. <laughs> absolutely. So we, you know, we try to get people in the regions that have similar, you know, conditions. Like you know, right now the South is experiencing the spawn. The Northeast is a little bit of a pre-spawn, and um, you know, we wanted to kind of make it fair. I mean, you know, a guy from Maine competing with a guy from Texas right now just doesn't make sense. So we try to, you know, geographically put the guys into different regions and let them go at it. But to be honest with you, you know, some guy can go to Lake Erie, catch a bunch of smallmouth bass, and lay a whooping on anybody from Texas and Florida. I mean, you know, any and anyone Maybe. who's in that angle, any single day could do it. So yeah. Or a guy could go to Gunnersville and lay a whooping on somebody up on Lake Erie, couldn't they, Brian? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> to be <Absolutely>. determined. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I mean, look at it like this. You know, uh, geographically, look, Texas and Florida and, you know, and, and that whole area are known for the biggest bass, you know, and yeah. they're lo- known for the Giants. I mean, the, the Florida strain bass are famous for a reason. But you got to remember, you know, when you're fishing one on one on a certain day and, and a guy gets, uh, let's say a guy in Michigan has, you know, has a, a place that's public. A guy can get on fish one day, and whereas the guy in Florida are, are not having the similar conditions, could have a cold front blow out, and, and the fish aren't biting that day, and he just doesn't do well. That guy in Michigan could put a whooping on the guy in Florida. Have you ever been to Felsmere in Florida? I have not, no. Mm-mm. Buddy, their worst day is like anywhere in the world's best day. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. We were down there on a cold front, just nasty, and I mean, I think it, it, we caught something – like I don't know, thirty something fish over twenty one inches. Like, oh my stupid! That's, that's nasty, and it's every. It, yeah. It's where Christine. Christine might have been in that area and put up a what forty five pound sack. Oh, that you was know, a month a month or so ago, month and a yeah, half ago. Yeah, AJ tore them up, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Got to be careful with those. So yeah. this, so this, you, it's a one on one deal, and it's it's only certain days. Like, how does how, when are when are competition days? Is it, is it a certain number of hours, or how does that work? Mm-hmm. Think of it like the NCAA. It's just like that, right? You have certain days where you have on the left side of the bracket, you'll have 32 guys fishing all on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then on the on the right side of the bracket, all 32 guys will fish on the Sunday. So it's Saturday, Sunday on the first round, the first round of 64. The next week we go to the same. It's going to be 30, um, 16 guys fishing on Saturday, 16 guys fishing on, on Sunday. And then we go down to the Sweet 16, which is going to be one day. And then the Elite 8 is going to be one day. Um, the Final Four is the very next day. I think that's May 10th. And then we have a championship round on May 16th. So what happens to these champions? Is there Do they move on to like a select championship bracket? Like have you thought like where is it, where's it going in the – in the future for these like winner winners brackets or whatever you know that's a great question man so you know as this thing continues to grow and we do have a vision of where we want it to be here's our vision to this okay it, right now it's facilitating a need to compete right um where you're not spreading out a bunch of guys on the same water and and you know you're doing it one-on-one regionally what we want to do and we thought long and hard about this is being able to break up the regions like a northeast region mid-atlantic region south region um you know texas region um midwest region so on so forth and you have 16 different regions with all the tournament directors nationwide and they can incorporate this style bracketing system where they can jointly um come together as tournament directors and say you know what we're going to do um uh, you know three or four guys three or four different clubs coming together we're going to have a 64 man bracket and they can compete regionally, and they come up with a final four, you know. And that final four of all these sixteen different um, regions can come together, and we'll have a national qualifying championship, just like you have the NCAA tournament for basketball, and have it a big tournament together, and have you know a pretty big uh, entry fee, maybe two hundred bucks or something. And that way, they're all competing for a major big prize. So, but do it live fish. on one body of water? No. Do it regionally. Yeah, do it regionally where you can compete against one another from the 64 to 32 to Sweet 16 on their own water. Take mm-hmm. the Elite Eight and bring them to one body of water and yeah, then go okay. at it. Yeah, that's what I was wanting to make sure that there was going to be some kind of somewhere alive. You know, that way it's not just a honey hole 
Nope. So pump, pump, yeah, get the Elite Eight. Again, it, this is all assuming that we have to still maintain, you know, 10 or less people, you know. But you could do the Sweet 16 on one water, you know, if things start to improve. We can do Sweet 16 on one water, and let's say we go to Gunnersville, you know, or Kentucky Lake or something, and let them go back at it and really pump up the Final Four, you know, like, again, just like the March Madness, you know, where the Final Four is the big deal. So, so. in that respect, you kind of it is kind of like the NCAA tournament because in the first couple rounds – especially the higher seeds get to play near their home usually. That, you know that's I mean? right. And that's it. kind of end exactly. up traveling to the, the final location. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting idea for sure, and it sounds like you can kind of grow it exponentially by reason. The, the 64 the first time is going to be cool to watch. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I can see all the, all the things you can do with it. I know what Ryan's saying is the concern is you got guys with honey holes locally. but Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, sure. I'm i uh, never been a proponent of any online tournaments ever. But I, I think I like the concept of it. I think for right now, none of us have a choice but to run online tournaments. Like our our own local, you know, grassroots club is pretty much shifted online because we don't have a choice. Like we can't go meet up and hang out. But you know, I think if you took this this concept that that you're running with here, and you you have if you do it regionally, you know, three or four states within driving distance. Let's say you have your 64 guys sign up. What if you do one body of water for the first round, one body of water for the second round, incorporate some live events into this, or maybe, you know, first round, do a honey hole, whatever. But as you move on, you know, granted, hopefully coronavirus is gone in the yeah. next two months. I mean, not gone, but controlled, but we can get back to fishing. I would like to see that, you know, kind of bracket style on the same body of water, on the same conditions, uh, you know, really see some folks like slugging it out side by side. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. That, that that would be great. And also, too, what, this is going to be a complimentary tour. What I mean by that is this will never replace a live event, you know. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can fish our bracket tour at the same time you're fishing your live event and have that fish count. Just like, yeah. you know, if, you, I mean, it just makes – and again, you can fish – well, rules is you can fish any public water in the United States you want to. You don't have to necessarily fish the state that you're in. Yeah. And so if, if right. you're on a, like if you're on the Hobie tour and you come across, you know, some slabs, you can count that best five that day. And it so happens to coincide of when the bracket tours is doing, we just give you the identifier and, and slap it on there, you know? So Rodney asked a good question. Is it seven to five fishing hours in your own time zone? Your own time zone. Okay. Correct. Local time zone. Yeah. We, okay. We've got people from Maine to California and, you know, the guy in California is going to be able to fish until his five o'clock. Gotcha. So it sounds like it was received well by the anglers. We were talking a little bit before we came live. You said, you know, this filled up in two days and you think you had enough to fill up another bracket. I, I did. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, the, the messages that we got were, you know, oh man, I'm, I wish I didn't miss this. I wish I'd known about it. You know, we try to, you know, publish it out there the best we can. Um, you know, I'm not a, I don't like what we call, you know, like, um, you know, huge promoter and just trying to just blast, you know, blast post everywhere. But I thought this was a perfect opportunity for everybody kind of seeing the kind of community. Hey, something new, something to get a hold of. And yeah. it, it, it has been, it has been incredible, guys. It really, it's been impressive. Yeah, and you've already got one open for May, so that's that's, probably, that's probably starting to fill up already. It is, yeah. We have uh, nine anglers already signed up. I'm thinking in just a couple hours, and you know, I expect it probably to sell out, or you know, to really sell out probably in the next, you know, next couple of days. But you know, again, all we're doing with all the May cancellations going on is just putting people on some water and competitively kayak fish. So, yeah, you know, I think we guys we were talking about, you know, like our first bracket that we've got here in April. We've got some hammers in there, you know. We've got on the West region. We got Brad Case versus Josh Booth, you know. I mean, those guys are huge, you know, uh, hammers, and they're going at it the first round. I would love to get a camera, <laughs> you know, and watch them go at it, you know, and, and watch the final hours of that thing come down to who's going to be eliminated, you know, one and done. I think that'd be kind of cool. Man, that, I want to get Brad that. Case really he he dominated the uh, KBS Kite Bass Series Pro Tour. Um, I think he finished in the top three of every Pro Tour stop on the Kayak Bass Series. How many, how many anglers? Two. <laughs> <laughs> but he finished in the top three of every one of them, Jeff. The numbers are numbers. Listen, man. The numbers are uh, numbers. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to get into what, some Are you an analyst? What I is know, this? I know, man. Sorry. 
I, I want to get into some of those matchups in a little bit because there are some good ones in there. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. You know, and there's a potential. I'm kind of a bracket nerd in March anyway with the basketball tournament. So there's some. Right. You kind of look ahead at second and third round. There's some pretty cool matchups that could be. Well, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, why bass or the professional fishing tours don't use this style, especially now when you people are dying for content in live sports. You can do the same thing. I mean, who wouldn't want to see a Gerald Swindle versus a Jacob Wheeler one on one on a bracket, and, and you're having a one day fish off and to, to advance to the next round? I mean, that would be awesome to see. Or, yeah. or if you have a guy who's up and coming, you know, that's was a co angler all, all their life, and they're just making their way onto the tour, and they're a 16 seed based on points, and they go against a heavy hitter like a, a Jacob Wheeler or a Kevin Van Dam. That could make his career if he winds up beating them. You never know. I'd rather see a Clifton Allen versus a Jim Clark kind of a matchup. Man, that'd be a that'd be a barn burner. Get somebody to do you, live stream. Would that. either of them break eighty? Do you think? I don't know. That'd, that'd be the fun. Let's race to eighty. We'll, we'll watch it. <laughs> no, that'd be cool. That'd, no, that'd be really cool uh, to see it on the pro level. And, and I'd like I, we were talking before we came on about that. And I think there was something like that with the FLW back in the day, but I'm I. I don't want to lie to you and say that's for sure, but there was a bracket style way back, and I don't know why they stopped doing it. I mean, it makes sense. It does make sense. Again, every pro, every pro level, whether it be NFL, NBA, NCAA, all have a bracket playoff system. Why don't we? So in kayak bass versus fishing, why not? Let me ask you this, because this is my question as a as a tournament as a tournament director that's been doing this for a minute. How are you going to score this with Tourney X? over the weeks you gonna have to run multiple events or is it going to be one continuous event i mean there's no bracket option on there yet anyway <clears throat> there isn't and and um Dwayne actually called me we, we talked about this uh for hours on end uh, how we're going to do this so what we did is we set it we set up six different tournaments um and so the cut the anglers just sign up for the tournament this is the round of 64 and what happens is you know the advancers will be automatically placed on the back end we'll have to do this on the back end um put into another tournament and so yeah there's going to be six different bb uh, or bkkt tournaments and then you're going to have um you know uh, round 30 uh, round 64 round 32 six sweet 16 elite eight final four championship so they don't have to do anything we do it all in the back end well that, 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 and is it just one fee one fee. You don't have to pay six tournament fees for each one of those entries, right? So. That's where that's where Dwayne stepped up and really helped okay, us out. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. He, nice. It was it was and he's he's working on writing some some programming to do a bracket style tournament. He's getting calls. You know, we're getting calls from tournament directors saying how we're doing this, and there's going to be a demand for this. We we already see it. So, yep. Let's see, we got more comments coming in. Uh, People asking how they sign up. I don't know if Katie's watching. She's usually clutch with the link. She already so. she already commented on there, homebody. She, she needs to throw she a link. In, the first throw, ones. throw a link in there for me. That'd be good. No. Uh, but yeah, you, you can find Kayak Bass Bracket on Facebook. Uh, they've got a Facebook page. You guys have a website now too, right? Yeah, it's called BassBracket.com. So yeah, it's uh, there's some information in there. One thing we're doing too, guys, is is we're featuring uh, grassroots anglers, right? And we're trying to feature anglers that you don't know. Uh, and tell, tell their story and see how they're doing things. So we want to make, you know, again, just take the guys who, who want to sign up and just and just fish. I'd rather have a guy, to be honest with you, give me a guy who's going to drag a kayak through the mud and not be a NASCAR angler where they're holding up a you know Coca-Cola can and talk about how great their kayak is in front of sponsors all day long. I want a guy that's going to look sling mud, who does it for the passion and, and, and does it, you know, just, just for the heck of it. And, uh, hey, man, you know. That's bring those guys to the tournament. You know, we only have the we already have the the guys that are the bigger names and, and all that stuff. The, the bigger names are more than welcome to participate. We want them in there. But man, I want to tell the story <laughs> of the guy who's from Podunk, you know, Mississippi, and just loves kayak fishing. Let me tell his story, you know, and and let people see that. That's what we want. Are you going to incorporate any uh, interview type stuff in between these rounds, or what are you trying to do? We we are yeah we actually are we're going to talk about you know if you know especially the elite eight sweet sixteen final four guys we're going to definitely do online um, videos and post it to the website and just see how they're doing and we we're going to try to do live um, 
on the water interviews as it goes along. Hopefully the, the kayakers will have enough cell phone signal to do that. So yeah, man, we're going to make it, we're going to try to make it as big as we can. You know, I've always been heard, you know, shoot for the sun and stars. And if you hit the ceiling, at least you're going up. So like we're going to try it. Hey, and quick update, Katie's in there with the link. So if you're looking for the link, it is in the comments. <laughs> uh, and if you're just jumping on here, we got quite a few on here now. Help us out and share this around to your local group. So your local anglers know about this uh, event. Cause there's another one coming up in May. And if it's successful, I'm sure that you guys may push this out through the summertime. So uh, help us out and share this video around. I want to talk about the financial aspect of this, too, because, I mean, I think I think that's what we're missing. Right. So another reason why I kind of did it is because, look, you know, I, I I've traveled on all these tours and there's nothing wrong with them. But at the end of the day, we're in a completely different financial situation today. We were just a couple months ago. You know, guys are losing their jobs. You know, the stock market crashed. I mean, we've got some pretty scared folks not willing to spend as much money. And people are a little leery to go on the road uh, and, and and travel. And, you know, on these kayak events that are going on, yeah, you're going to get about 80 to 100 guys out there. And by the time you spend, let's say, $200, $300 in tournament fees, you're spending money on gas, hotels, travel back and forth. You're spending about a grand, maybe 1500 bucks on the tournament easily, right? Easy. If you don't have sponsors, it's coming out of your pocket. Um, and then, you know, if you don't break the top 10, you're not breaking even, you're losing money and you're just doing it. Hey, because I'm having fun in this, you're staying at home, you know, your waters, you're paying 40 bucks for an entry fee. Uh, and you know, you're competing against some of the best conquerors in in the nation one-on-one. And you know, if you get bounced out, okay, it's 40 bucks, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a financial, you know, uh, I guess, um, advantage to doing this as well, you know, so, yeah, sure. you know, it's the same anyway, reason it just people, makes sense. Same reason people do the monthly onlines, I guess, but it's like, I've never been a fan of those just because they're a month long and, and, the, and yeah. the you can beat up local hot spots and, and a lot of people have more time off than other people. I've just never been a fan That's of That's right. But this is a different spin on it. I like it. And it's sort yeah. of like the Yak Bassing guys. I think they do one day online events or one or two day. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It looks like people are excited. We got people coming in now saying they just signed up for the May event. Beautiful. Uh, wait a minute. Dwayne said he's from Podunk, Mississippi. Hey, that's fine. He lives in, he lives in I'll, Jackson. I'll, I'll feature that guy. <laughs> I'm talking about Dwayne Wally. Oh, Dwayne. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no one. No one. No wonder it works so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, he he did a great job. I, you know, I I was super impressed with with him and turning X and having you basically taking an idea and running with it, man. I mean, there's not too many people who pick up the phone and, and call you directly, so I appreciate it. Yeah, Dwayne's, a, Dwayne's a good dude. So, I think Ryan kind of asked this earlier, but breaking down the regions. Uh, you know, the number one seeds in each region. Did you look at those, Ryan? Mm-hmm. Right here. We got Mark Edwards in the east from West Virginia. And if you guys know these people in the comments, throw them in there. Uh, Clint Reither in the south. And that, that's one of my guys from Arkansas. Look out for Clint. He, he's not super well-known nationally, but he's a stick here in Arkansas. Uh, north, Eric Siddiqui, the native catch, native catchboard pro, Eric Siddiqui. Uh, oh, man. Get off Siddiqui now. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That's hilarious. I know, I know he's waiting. Uh, in the West, and in the West, Brad Case he got sent out West. Yeah, sent out I mean, west. well, to be to be to be honest with you, man, honest, we took sixteen, we took sixteen guys, I put them in a bracket generator, and came up with a random seating, and that's how it came out. Okay, so, so I mean, they, yeah, they I mean, weren't picked to be number one seeds necessarily; no. it just kind of came out that way. Which that's how it came pretty out. Pretty solid, yeah. somewhat, you know, a handful and pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, but but that Brad Case matchup, Brad and Josh, first round, that, that's a tough draw. That's brutal. Yeah, that's a brutal one, man. I, I want to see that. So I tell you that my pick in there, uh, Brad Golden. Uh, he he fishes our local club. Him and him and his dad Terry, uh, they beat the hell out of us pretty much every <laughs> tournament. So uh, I'm serious. Like keep an eye on them. Like Chickamauga and Gunnersville, they uh, hurt somebody's feelings. See, and that's a, that's what's so, so great about here too, man. We're we're going to be able to nationally so, showcase people in their state and their water. You know, and, and, and brag about, you know, if, if they advance along, what are they doing? What water are they fishing? What bait are they using? What's their strategy, you know? And, and it's just, it's just going to be cool, man, because they get to brag about home. I mean, when I, when I go on the road and I'm talking to people, you know, about fishing, man, I want to talk about the Potomac River. I want to talk about tide cycles and people that just don't know how to fish, you know, you know the Potomac River. That's my yeah. thing, you know? And I, I love doing it. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what this is going to do. It's going to showcase and allow people – 
uh, to brag a little, a little bit about what's going on at home. And, and people are going to be able to see it too. So, so Chris Crago asked as you as we go through the bracket in the in the first and second, you know, as the first round ends, for instance, are you going to put the the scores next to the names in the first round? And oh yeah, man, we're we're going to fill the bracket out. Yeah. So yeah. Um, after every round, you're going to be able to see, you know, their their length and um, you know if it's you know 100 inches and then the other guys like 95 inches or whatever, you're going to see it like a score. Um, next to their name, and, and all the brackets going to be filled out every round. So yeah, well, actually, I'm trying to I'm trying to see if we're going to be able to. And this is uh, this is just long thinking, but being able to take um, being able to take Dwayne's API on the back end and put it into our website and be able to do kind of live scoring bracket uh, scoring as it's going along through Tourney X to our site. So that's the dream. That would be awesome. Yeah. Mark Edwards asked who's got the DL on Keith Martin. I'm going to guess that's who he's matched up with. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah, I don't know. Drop that on KB Nation, see what kind of comments you get. Right. (laughs) Be like his his – Tax history and all kinds of stuff come out from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got some investigators on this site for sure, man. They know everything. Now, did I see that you guys are doing a bracket pool on top of this? Is that available? Yeah. Yeah, man. So online, if you go to BassBracket.com, you, there's a PDF version of the bracket. And there's a guy that's posted on um, KBN. His name is Marcus Coates. Um, if you go on BassBracket.com, you can ask us to see his. He's a featured angler on, on this website. But he is collecting money. I think it's like five or ten bucks. And we're, we're I mean, it's March Madness, man. It's an office pool. Uh, it, it just, you know, pick the names. You know, you have just as much of a chance of um, picking the right names in this pool than you do an NCAA tournament. You know, I mean, seriously, these bracket busters are just unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to do it. And Mark is going to collect the money for us. And um, he'll keep everybody posted who's in the lead. So check out that post that from Marcus uh, Coates. And, uh, yeah, let's. We'll get a pool. I'm in. I'm in it. So yeah, let's that, do it. That's a pretty cool concept, man. A little, little bracket pool. You know, for those, like, I couldn't fish this one. There was two weekends that conflicted. If I was lucky enough to make it into the further rounds, uh, <clears throat> past the first round, I wouldn't have been able to do it. But I want to try to do the main one. And, uh, you know, that would be, be pretty sweet to at least get in there and try to pick these names this month, even though I can't do the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. You going to get in there? Can, right? we set up side, can we set up side bets on KBN, Jeff? Yeah. Like weekly side bets, one on one. Yeah, that. house keeps twenty percent. I like that a little, <laughs> little bookie business. Yeah, link that on the website. We could. We, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get this going. The, yeah, I, we're I'm, gonna uh, set up an it, offshore account though, or something. That's I think. fine. As long as I get at least a sponsorship out of it from you guys, that would be awesome. That's all I ask. Oh, yeah, we sponsor the heck out of we it. We sponsor. <laughs> Send him a sticker, Jeff. <laughs> Did you did you, make a did you not see make that box of toilet paper that Kurt Smith's got? I mean, that's worth like a thousand dollars. Yep. Speaking of sponsorship, I, I'm dead serious when I say this, guys. I mean, you know, we're grassroots right now. Um, one thing we want to do is to be able to sweeten the pot the best we can, you know, with the national bracket like we talked about. So, you know, if you're hey, is anybody out there interested and wants to be, you know, the bass bracket presented by whatever man we're all about it we're, you know as i say we will promote like crazy and you know make make your investment worth the while and we'll do everything we can for you you know and become a partner and and, and make this thing roll yeah just remember house keeps 20 percent. you heard it here first i hear it I'm yep. just kidding, man. I, yeah if you're out there <laughs> yep. you get involved that'd be cool uh, We've yeah, been playing that game KBN for a while. Casino, man. I, I see it. <laughs> KBN Casino. Let's KB, do it. Ooh, KBN. We could do little slot machines with their angler face in it. That'd be that'd be amazing. That's right. Uh, what kind of measuring boards do you allow? Shane Skinner wants to know. Any? I mean, any, any that you know, like your hog troughs, your um, catch boards. Um, <laughs> you, what, that's fine. <laughs> you say Is there any kind of rules as far as placement or manipulation or or bending in half of any measuring boards? One, yeah. Oh, <laughs> One thing is good is we got some very experienced judges, and um, you know if we see a big old paw on it and trying to um, smash down a bass, <clears throat> and the board is bent nearly in three quarters and a half, it's disqualified. And uh, we'll call Smart. you and we'll email you and we're going to ask you a lot of questions. So um, yeah, we take it seriously, man. You know, no, everybody's I like that. yeah. I mean, everybody's money's in it. You know, and I know it's just for fun. But, man, if you can't fish a tournament and, and, and do it right, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you, man. If you got to cheat to win, go, go find something else to do, man. Tell you me. know? Agreed. Like that. 
So I want to talk about – somebody commented and said, who are the favorites? I, did, I went through the bracket. Like I said, I'm a bracket geek and went through there and picked my final four. Uh, if you're if you're KBF rules KBF boards, who's Rodney Kennan? Is he involved with this with you? Um, Rodney Kennan, no, I do not. Okay, no. I don't know why he threw um, that comment in there. Uh, it's um, <laughs> yeah, I, we're using we're using the KBF um, safety rules. Okay, you know, in terms of you know all gotcha, that stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, why why try to reinvent the wheel, guys? You know, they, they've got that right. You know, I mean, we're your freaking PFD. You know, make sure that you know, people know where you're doing. Um, you know, we will disqualify you if your PFDs out. There is no alcohol allowed on, on the kayaks while this is going on. And um, you know, we, we got to keep it right, man. I don't want to, you know, I don't want anything to happen that shouldn't happen on the water while, while we're trying to have fun. You know. Right. Okay. So, and just to clarify, you said any on the boards. You just meant those two boards. There's a lot um, of other ones out there. <laughs> yeah. What, what's the other one? Sky. sky Golden Rule. Fish sticks. Um, Berkeley doesn't Berkeley make a little? Yeah, Berkeley I would, I would go with kind of plastic. The, just thing. as a just as a recommendation, so, I would narrow that down to and, those two. Yeah, hog trough and catch. hog trough and catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah, hog trough and catch is what most people use, and I think we're going to stick with that. David Cruz coming in, futuristic stuff. So, so I'm a, so I'm going to drop my final four to you. Y'all tell me what you think. Oh, all right, Ooh. yeah, all right. So, coming out of the north, I've got the 15 seed. Patrick Tharp going to the Final Four. Yeah, I hear he's a uh, he's a hammer. I tell he's you what, a hammer I'm, I'm up there bring, in Illinois, man. I'm gonna uh, bring up a guy. I'm gonna bring up a guy out of the north. All right. Um, his name is Greg Nosar. We're gonna watch that guy. Oh come on, you're in the he's tournament. A- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fish my own tournament, man. I'm not judging my own fish, but okay, I'm fishing okay, my own okay. tournament. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now the East, and I didn't even know this guy. Then I did some quick, quick clicking on some Tony X stats. Out of the East, I got Brad Golden coming out of the East. Yeah, uh, that's can, a, that's a give me, dude. That's a <laughs> I'm gimme? telling you. Well, yeah. I want to I want to point a guy out, and he's well known in Virginia. His name is John Mayhews. Okay. And um, not a lot of people know about this guy, but anybody who fishes the Northern Virginia Kayak Club up here, guys. He knows what he's doing. So any good given time, watch that guy. Is he in the east he's, bracket? Uh, he's in the east bracket. Right. Yep. He they is, told yeah, me the they... same thing about Chase Tanner, and I've fished a couple <laughs> tournaments with Chase, and he's a joke. So <laughs> bless, bless it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put pressure on. I'm gonna put pressure on John, but he's a 14 seed coming out of the east, and right. uh, I'm telling you, he's he's if he's on fish, you better watch it. All right. Well, out of the north, I got like I said, Patrick Tharp. He's a 15 seed. Brad Golden's a two seed out of the East. I got him. Uh, then coming out of the South, I've got my guy. He's a nine seed, the Ninja Jason O'Brien coming out of Texas. And out yep, of the, the Ninjas out, in it. Yeah. Oh, and out of the damn. West, out of the West, I got Ryan's twin, Mark Pendergraft, making a run out of Texas. Wow. Are you twins in it too. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Dude. This thing's loaded, on, man. You, this thing is loaded. This is going to be a battle. Yeah. Ugly twin and the ninja are going to be shirtless in the parking lot trying to duke it out in the final four. So that's my final yeah. four. That's my final four, and I got ninja winning the whole thing. That's my point. Wow. Hey, you got a lot of faith in ninja. That boy's got some fish down there around DFW, man. I'm telling you. Shoo wee! I reckon he's fishing grapevine, huh? I don't know where he's fishing. Mm. <laughs> but but there's a lot of oh, guys man. in there that could pull it off. Uh, yeah, but that, that's my guess on the final four for what that's worth, which is nothing. So good luck to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool, man. As I said, somebody's gonna make a name for themselves. You know, I mean, somebody that you didn't even think of is gonna wind up running. Just like every NCAA tournament. There's look, I went to George Mason University. Okay, uh, you know, I, I'm super stoked. When we went to the final four, I went to Indianapolis and watched the whole thing live. That was incredible. There could be a George Mason in this in this tournament that we just don't know who that is. Like some so. kind of underdog. We need we need an underdog to cheer for. We need to pick we one do. out on this thing. We do, man. man. I need we to dig do. back in and find me an underdog. Yeah, you're gonna have to make me look at the bracket now. <laughs> I know. I got it I got it right here on another slide. I'll throw it back up on there. Hang on. That's there. okay, I can't. You can't My see you're not bad, looking. Jeff. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna take a quick gander while we're talking and see if I can just throw my name throw my throw my All right, I got my underdog. I found him. Brandon Fink, another Arkansas guy. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. on at home cooking, Jeff. Nah, the heck, I got to do what I got to do, man. You got to root for your guy. Yeah, you got to root I for your guy. I fished in Arkansas. State. I don't think there's enough even online fish in Arkansas to make a run at anything. Hey, you better be careful now. 
Y'all get beat by New Mexico or something. Hey, <laughs> the, the summer, the, the onlines is where we can tell In the shine. desert. Hey, the, the onlines, that's where we shine. The, the dude put up 113 inches in one of them onlines last, I think oh, it was last summer goodness. sometime. Shane Williams put up 113 inches, and then he left the state of Georgia. That was his mic drop. That's, that's Unbelievable. online. Man. That's the beauty of online. I know, dude. Yeah, but see, Mike Ortega online. says it's we online. need a Merle Dog uh, theme song. Hey, Garrett Morgan just said Brandon caught a 22 today. So, see, Brandon's on. I did, too, yeah. and it was brown. You ain't exactly. in the tournament. I'd be picking you in the bracket, man. There ain't nobody <laughs> in the, the tournament. Yeah, it hadn't started. That's true. That's right. That's true. Yeah, right. But, again, a gel. Still, I just want to apologize for my language earlier when we were on the phone. I, you probably had to wash your ears out after. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, can, I could down. hear Ryan's drag screaming in, through the speakerphone <sighs> as he tried to land this fish. Huge, huge, Smalley, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna that, get that back out and stick it again tomorrow. It was like uh, a last. Gun. It was an Iconelli. Will there be a one shining moment? Todd Patrick said. I, we're not gonna do all that. Oh, one shining moment. What is that? What's that, that song mean? they play at the end of the tournament? You know that kind of that corny song at the end of the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you know, what, one thing down. about one thing about online tournaments, you know, usually they last you know, basically a week, a month or whatever. And, you know, like you said, you know, some guys are have advantages because some guys can fish every single day. Some guys just can fish one or two days out of the, out of the online months, you know, that you're fishing, but here it's a designated day. So you could be bounced out just like a normal, um, you know, tournament in person tournament. You can be bounced out that single day. So that's why it's a little bit different from just an online tournament because you have to fish one day and, and post it. So, so when somebody gets bounced out of the first round that we won't think should, what will be the number one excuse that comes out? Oh man, cold front, <laughs> cold front, coronavirus. Bass, I, 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 had bites, I had the bites. I had the bites, but bed. I lost them. I lost them. Yeah, the yeah, the I lost them. Okay. Yeah, I've yeah. been there. Just I was there about two hours ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Yeah, there, there's definitely going to be excuses for sure. Oh, so, that's, but that's, that's okay. That's half the fun, man. That's half the fun. That's that's the beauty of it. That's Can the sure. winner? Does the winner get to cut the line off the losers' reels? That'd be cool. That would be instead awesome. of cutting down the net, just go cut the line off. <laughs> we got. Some I think they should win, pride. I, I think they should win the guy's kayak. <laughs> I mean, Ooh, you know. playing for pink slips. Exactly. You yeah. Could, depending on which hey. kayak, you get a bad deal on that. I don't know. That's Holy true. cow! Yeah, I'm gonna go buy some. Once some once sun get out of quarantine, I'm gonna go buy some just so somebody gets screwed on that one. So, so, so yeah. the uh, the comments coming in. Somebody said too much rain. My fish flopped off the board. Dale Griffin said so the other guy fished a private lake. <laughs> yeah. That's all good excuses, yeah. yo. That's that's good. Well, I mean, Had the that, fish that, tied up. That, yeah, that's important because, I mean, we definitely want to make sure that people are fishing public water. You can't fish aquariums or tanks. You can't fish, you know, ponds. It's got to be public water. And, and Tourney X does the GPS, so we'll be able to see where they're where they're. Can you take your fish out of your private tank and run them down to the lake and take the pictures? Only in Texas. Oh! <laughs> no, they, they cut them up in Texas. Up, <laughs> You'll know. You'll have a head up here, the tail in the yeah, middle, and the belly at the end. That's true. They You'll get a, wild yeah, in true. Texas. you have a one-pound, yeah. 22-inch fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Hey, so I you, can't wait to see the first dude that freaking cuts a catch board and welds it back together. That's what I'm waiting on. Wow. The sad part is I believe that will try. somebody will try to do that. I wouldn't even have thought of that. That's, uh, yeah. I've right. ordered four catch boards. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Make sure they're the same well color. Make sure they're the same color at least. They're not. Oh my I, God. That's where I screwed up on the first three. <laughs> purple and green <laughs> coming together. That's hilarious. <laughs> Crew's coming in. Bass boat pulled up on my spot. That's a good excuse. That's a good one. I've used that one before. It, it happens. Yeah. Oh, Jacob, we mentioned Jacob again. Wheeler's He's name crazy several here. times tonight. All right, Greg, stepping stepping to the back. Greg's he's leaving. Handle some, he's handling some business. Let, so if you guys are on there, my, oh, you're good. I had to let my dog out, man. Sorry, he was driving me nuts. If you guys are on the stream here, uh, if you have any more questions, throw them at us while we're, while we still got this going. Uh, Greg's more than willing <laughs> the, to answer. We've got on the uh, stream. Yeah, on the stream, on the web. Is that a thing still? We're on the <laughs> Not, web. I like on the stream. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, you're still streaming on the interweb. Yeah, man. Hey, we're on a streak, Ryan. This thing's been working pretty good the last few times. Hey, I mean, it's coming in good. Right. It's going to go crashing down. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah. Blew that good. one. 
No, we've got a lot of comments in here. We appreciate everybody watching tonight. It's, uh, it's been a good thing. I'm excited to follow this. It's going to be a fun time. Can you both fish the same day if need be, Kyle Long said. I don't know what that means, Kyle. I don't, yeah. Um, Some Arkansas junk right there. I'm not sure what that means. I mean, yeah, if, if you're fishing you're with fish, a buddy. The, per, is the person you're fishing against is fishing the same day as you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know. Clarify your question, man. This isn't Oklahoma. We need we need better. <laughs> hashtag Tiger King. Yeah, hashtag Tiger King. Oh. Kyle said to eat him, Jeff, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's talking to you. Because <laughs> I know damn well he ain't talking to me. That's uh, Greg, if you find that man in the tournament, DQ him for uh, <laughs> inappropriate inappropriate comments on our, on our stream. Somebody just signed up as Carol Kyle. Baskin. <laughs> oh. oh man, man. that would be rough. Clarify your question. I still don't know what that means. Regardless, I think he's probably talking about it being, you know, <laughs> are you fishing against the guy who's fishing the same day? And and that and that is absolute yes. yes, yes. All right. Same Garrett bracket. Morgan wants to know: Did Carol Baskin kill her husband, Greg? In your opinion, most definitely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Most Fed definitely. Fed him to the there we go. Yeah. Did, no did Epstein kill himself? He did not. All right. We're solving a lot of mysteries here. Yes. Tonight, oh, you got to remember, I, listen, I live right behind Quantico Marine Base where the FBI oh, is. Oh, wow. So I know some things around here, y'all. Okay. Well, I Do you know the guys on Criminal Minds? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say, man. Secret. <laughs> no? <laughs> you don't know nothing. All right. Man. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. man. I don't know. One of the greatest things I ever got to do is shoot guns on Hogan Alley, man. That was awesome. That was so, such a blast. Okay. So. Does, does this Quantico have the information on why it takes some people so long to pay? At? Never mind. I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> oh, well. <no. laughs> Talk about your, your your checks or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I'm just playing. Your man. checks. <laughs> checks. Who do you think you're talking to, man? I work for the government. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, no, we got no more questions. Kyle Long said it was a bad question. We figured that out already, Kyle. But appreciate you. <laughs> Dang, get off, Kyle. It's Kyle. Kyle's the one that catches them big fish in his backyard, isn't he? Kyle's my dude, man. I just went over and hung out with is him that, the other day. Yeah, yeah. Is that it. Kyle? Yeah, he lives on one of the big one he of can't, like pulls up eight pounders off the bank. He lives on one of the big bass lakes in Arkansas. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Kyle's an awesome guy. Nothing but love for you, bro. Chill. <laughs> Eat me. Eat me. <laughs> Todd Patrick said he loves the seven to five fishing time. That is a long day. I, I like that as well. You know. Yeah, it's a long day. I mean, I mean, you know, we thought about making it from you know midnight to mid, you know, eleven fifty nine. It's to make any sense. You know, we, we want to keep it just like normal normal tournament hours. You know, seven o'clock lines in, five o'clock check out. We want the we want the anglers to check in and out off turning X. You know, just we, we're trying to keep make sure everybody's safe and get off the water and all that good stuff. So yeah, it just made sense. Cool. It's kind of like uh, Steve O and the Bass Nation guys. Their their tournament day was long. I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how we do our local tournaments. We do like ten hour. We'll do ten hour, eight ten hour tournaments yeah. for our yeah. local trail. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's when <clears throat> just about the dusk bite will start. You know, and and somebody can land a, a last minute monster and just completely blow the bracket up. So that's kind of why you know we we did it. I don't see any more questions coming in uh, before we get out of here. Any, any other topics we want to cover? Ryan, before we jump off tonight, I'm trying to think of what else has happened in the news here lately. Uh, I know uh, KBF dropped a little video that, or was it KBF in general, or was it just Chad talking about some struggles they're having over there? I'm still blocked. I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, know so they're, I mean they're they're canceling just about all their you know in person um, in person um, tournaments, and I'll be honest with you guys. You know, one of the things I wanted to do is reward the anglers who advanced to the final four. Um, and, you know, one, I would love to cooperate with some of these tours like KBF or, you know, Hobie or Hulk and see if they can get automatic qualifiers into their uh, end of the year challenges. Right. Uh, whether it be the N- uh, KBF uh, national championship. So I've reached out guys. I mean, I've, I've done everything I can. Um, I've texted, I've messaged, I've emailed, I've done everything but write an airplane message above Chad Hoover's house um, and try to get him to respond. No response. And so one of the things is, look, I'm a business guy and I'm straight up. Here's the deal. If, if, if it's a no, just tell me no and I'll just move on. No big deal. No feelings hurt. But don't blow me off, man. You know, I mean, just answer an email, answer a phone call. But here's, here's how I see it. 
and uh, uh, just a part in me, if you don't want to corroborate with me, that's fine. Now I'm going to compete against you. If you don't want to corroborate or cooperate, now I'm your competition. And so here's, you know, I don't maybe need that aspect of it to reward anglers into going to another tours championship where we can take our own bracket, make it big and have our own qualifiers go into our own national championship. So that's where I want to go with it, man. So, you know, know, we'll see. You got, you got Josh Booth. He's in your tournament and he's running that all American. You might be able to get some spots into that. Yeah. We didn't Josh have actually talked. Okay. Um, And so, yeah. So I I don't know if that's the route that they're going to go or not. Um, But yeah, I mean, so if we have to do, if we have to do it alone, we will. I mean, again, it's just guys, it's just fishing. It's just a matter of having fun. We're not here to make it m- make money on the stupid thing or you know whatever. We're just have a bunch of guys fishing in a tournament, knock each other out, talk a bunch of trash, be, you know, bet some beer against each other, and just have fun, man. You know, well, and it's just an alternative of what we got going on right yeah. now. Well, I don't that's know, it. Yeah, I don't know what's happening over there with those guys. I know the the pro tour is basically canceled. I don't know what's going to go down with the trail series. I know, you know, Bass Nation's kind of in limbo right now. Uh, the Hobie's working on some things. Uh, you know, I, I, I want the live tournaments to fire back up. I mean, I'm ready for yeah, that, but, me I'm, too. But, but in the meantime, I'm excited for what you're doing. I mean, with all the quarantine stuff and state shutting down, it's kind of like most of the parks and stuff have closed all their ramps, which traditionally that's where the larger tournaments were held out of the larger launches. So I don't know really how, how all that's going to play out. I know Bass is working, trying to see what's going to happen with the state of Tennessee, like if we're going to be able to do the Chickamauga tournament here. Uh, it's all – all pretty interesting uh did you you mentioned the all-american are did i hear or see that they're they're partnered or working with kbf now or something something like that quali- cross qualification i want to say if i understand it right there's a cross cross qualification and maybe sim- you know there's been simultaneous events in the past where they run like one championship on top of another i think maybe the all-american <clears throat> is either going to be the trail championship or it's going to run in conjunction with it if that makes sense or something like that. Uh, but don't 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 take me to the bank on that. But there is some sort of partnership there that I'm, you know, I'm not fully aware of. I'm hoping to be at the TOC that week or prepping for it anyway. But I got a lot of work to Same, do. Same, bro. Got a lot of work to Definitely do. Definitely going to be there. I'll yeah. save you a seat. Come on. Yeah, I got a lot of work to do, but I'm going to try to get there. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, we, 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 we're all in this to promote the sport. We're all in this to get these, you know, the kayak fishing sport to another level. If we can cooperate, I would love to cooperate with Hobie. I, I love what AJ is doing. I mean, you know, I, I support the tournament. I fish every tournament I can with him. And, you know, I, I, I have no problem fishing his tournament at the same time, putting my fish that I catch in his tournament on my bracket. So yeah. that would be awesome, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, you know, AJ's about as open-minded as they come and willing to, to, to work with people. But I think that the uh, BOS and even the Bass Nation are kind of just – they're trying to do their own thing, not to step on anybody sure. else, just like you're trying to do your own thing. But I'm sure people over – and you don't have to worry about conflicts because obviously people fishing in your tournament can submit to both even if they're on Chickamauga fishing in May. They could submit to one of yours if they were in the bracket, and that would be a good place absolutely. to be. Good place to be. Yeah. Right? So. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so well, let me ask you guys this. If we decide to do this national championship, give me some ideas of where we can do that, um, you know, collaborated – uh, fishing tournament. Give me some ideas where we could have the final four or the you know the sweet sixteen. Like what Re- recommendation? God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the final four for sure. That'd be the final time those four should, ever fished. Should, should be a challenge. It'd be a challenge. It'd be a challenge. Should for be a challenge. Yeah. No, nah, boy. Some are central. Tennessee, you know that Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas is all pretty central. So mm-hmm. snag something there, you know. I mean, I'd probably look at where the guys were located and try to find a you know uh, if it's down to four or eight you can kind of gauge that a little bit better it's different than you know bringing in a couple hundred people so you can probably cater to them a little bit more but i'd probably put the top 10 lakes in a hat and pull the name out cool thing is you keep it random bring in some small lakes with that low of a that's true you know i mean some really there's like for instance, and I'm sure there's lakes like this everywhere. Central Arkansas, there's a lake called Lake Atkins. It's stocked with Florida's. It's our trophy lake. Double digits come out at all the t- out of there every year. But you know, you couldn't have a large kayak tournament there. You just couldn't do it. We we had one tournament down there. You know, we'll have some locals, uh, central guys. will have local tournaments there, but you couldn't hold a large scale kayak tournament because it's a small lake. But eight to ten guys, or you know, that'd be perfect. So I'm sure there's lakes like that in Texas, Tennessee, Alabama, all over the place that don't get to host tournaments because they're small that could hold the yeah. Lead eight pretty easy. 
Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Todd Patrick said yes, KBF was sending cash to help the All-American. Okay. So, there you go. Cash money. Wonder if yeah. it's straight up cash or like IOUs or I don't know. Um, I hope it's the rest of my national championship entry fee. Yeah, man. Maybe where that went. Garrett Morgan told me to shut that stuff up on the on the Lake Action. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the spots. Is that where, is that where Garrett's been? Oh, oh, it's one of the, that's one of the spots. That's where Garrett's been camped out. I'm always blowing people's spots, man. I think somebody got mad at me last time. I spot about burner, Sweatco. man. Spot burner, man. Hey, trust me. It, it may be a good spot, but ain't nobody driving to Central Arkansas to try to catch some biggins. They can just stay where they're at. Yeah, I hear you. Stay where they're at. Yeah, Atkins, 30, 30 people max is what Ben said. We had, we had a big tournament there the one year that had like 52, and it was freaking crowded. So there's no way you could have a large tournament there. Yeah. Well, I mean, going back to large, large tournaments, I mean, just look at the KBF National Championship there, man. I mean, you, you, we're going to do it at Gunnersville, those who qualified. You've got, you know, 850 anglers signed up at Gunnersville. Um, you know, it's again, going back to the cost aspect of it, you got $500 entry fees, it's probably going to cost anglers. You know, I'm traveling from Washington, D.C., so it's going to cost me probably, you know, I don't know, between two to $2,500 to go fish it. And then you get there and you got 850 anglers, not, not, not to mention the locals all over the freaking place. You know, why not go to your own water, fish your national championship, you know, and showcase your um, showcase your abilities at your home. And then let's see what you can do on the big dance, you know, at, at a centralized location. Yeah, so cool. that's the idea. Make, make them shotgun start, too, at the central location. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah, allow motors not? motors in yours? No motors. We do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we, we allow My next motors. question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we do. I'm burning spots and questions. My bad. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, Mark Coates said, do a central lake like Nickajack. What'd you say, Ryan? Uh, dude, I, I'll be honest with you. I do hate Nickajack, but my buddy, my buddy Derek that lives in town here, he called me yesterday morning. He's like, Man, he's like, I'm off work. He's like, let's let's get the bass boat and let's go out and, and get on Nick and Jack. We sat on Nick and Jack and we probably caught pff, thirty fish on <laughs> on traps and chatterbaits. We found a little patch of grass and wore them out. And I still hate Nick and Jack because the fish would be like three pounds, three and a half pounds, fifteen inches long. Like I mean, it's just <laughs> it's such a joke, man. I hate it. I went I went straight back to Gunnersville yesterday afternoon and this afternoon. I can't I can't do Nick and Jack anymore. And you busted 100 mm. inches in smallies down there last week, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Like Dude, that. we, uh, I think Good between gracious. me, Jody Campbell, and Garrett Campbell, we've had like 12 or 13 over 21 inch smallmouth in the last two weeks. In the South. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's the real insane. South down here, boy. The dirty mm. South. Wow. Mm hmm. Rename it the Smalley South. Well, y'all still don't tell nobody, man. Yeah, I got Keep you. that a secret. That, that was supposed to be seventy-five grand worth of fish. <laughs> Charge that with the corona. We, we we dropped the ball on that one. But the bite's hot. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep wearing it out. Uh, Randy Howe come up and fish. He came up and fished with me Friday. That was with the water falling. The water stabilized now. I found a bunch this afternoon. So we're gonna try to get back out and do that again. Try to get him to get the get the yaks out. He's he's kind of reluctant. He's spoiled mm -hmm. a little bit on his bass boat yeah. running gun but i i think he'd catch a lot more fish if he'd slow down a little bit and, and sit still in that kayak instead of just running 60 miles an hour everywhere it'd be Ooh. cool to see it'd be cool to see him try to operate out of a kayak um i want I, I do want to see that katie threw out one more question she said will y'all still make the final on one body of water for everyone to fish if corona still has everybody on restriction well honestly that's why you have the elite eight so um if Again, we're talking about next year. We're not talking about something that's going to happen. Hopefully, this year, this year, it's going to be a qualifier all year long in 2020 for a 2021 March Madness or whatever dates we choose. So we want to kind of coincide the March Madness, um, you know, you know, NCAA because people are thinking about brackets at that time, and you can qualify all through 2020 in your local clubs, right? And then we'll go into a 2021 bracket. Um, so that hopefully would not happen in 2021. Uh, but even so we have, you know, rules in place here that you can't have more than 10 people gathered in one spot. And if we go from sweet 16, maybe we'll just go down to an elite eight and just be done with that. So you're not launching more than quote unquote, 10 people then. Gotcha. Fair enough. All right. 
not too many more questions coming in. We've kind of pushing up against our time limit. We usually go for about an hour. We're about there. This has been a great conversation. I think it's been a great interview and very, uh, very Thank you. interesting format that Appreciate you have, guys. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks well, for thanks coming for, on, bud. Hey, yeah. thanks for the support, man. I really do you guys appreciate it. And, uh, you know, let me post and talk about it on, uh, on KBN. And, hey, I just want – again, let's just – Freaking have you know, go fishing, have fun. That's never, all I care about. Never forget, man. KBN cares. We care about people. Yes, this and we're opening cool. up a casino. That's what I found out tonight. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. We might we as well, man. I mean, I know that's about the only thing we're not doing. So we might as well do a casino. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nah, that, that was awesome, man. We appreciate your time, Ryan. You got anything else, man? You going to go Jackson more tomorrow or what? I'm going to get up in the morning and hit him one more time. Okay, you gonna be throwing them on your Insta so we can jealously follow along at work. All right, I'll keep it on. I'll keep it keep it on the gram. Yeah. All right, man. We'll be following along. Well, hey, once again, Greg, thank you, man. We're gonna wrap this up and get out of here and uh, go Sounds find good. kayak bass bracket on Facebook and on the website, and we will uh, get another show lined up for you here in the next week or so. But everyone, stay safe out there, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right, guys. Take care. See you guys.